All right, here's, here's something I really wanted to talk about. I thought it was fucking cool. And any of you guys that know Lunas, Lunas from Tonight, Lunas, Hudson, Mohawk, like that whole fucking wave of cool shit that these guys did and all the shit that uh, Lunas is still dropping. I know um I know Lunas for sure uses FL Studio. I'm not sure about Hudson, Mohawk, but I follow Lunas. Always look forward to seeing when he drops new music and shows himself vibing out in the studio. It's fucking crazy. I love that shit. So... Um, somebody asked him a question, I guess on Instagram, and then it should be up on the screen. Um, they asked him about any beat deconstruction soon. We'd love to see a live process, blah, blah, blah. Um, awesome answer. He was like, I tried doing that once. And to be honest with you personally, I have no clue what's going on as, as I'm making the music. Best thing I can explain is that I work with what I intuitively feel comfortable with in a way that doesn't hinder or create resistance when I'm in a flow state. So he said more, but I want to touch on that. That shit. Oh, my God. I couldn't have put it better myself. Like it's one of the reasons why I don't record myself as well, uh, you know, making music just because like, OK, I'll spend fucking 40 minutes trying to find the right kick. Like nobody wants to see that shit. You know, like that shit is so weird. The, we do the Moombatone deconstructed, and that's kind of like showing it done after. But like the whole process and filming that, like I'm so like not against it, but like I feel what he's saying. It's like you, when you're in that flow state and like ideas are coming and you're trying things that work, that don't work, you might be stuck on a melody that you never going to use. That is like also you might not even think is the right sound or the right key, but like you're trying to get to that that perfect piece of music or that that perfect idea but you got to work through all these bad ones to get there so it's like i feel that i totally feel that it's like when you're in the flow state you don't want to create resistance and be like oh the camera's on i gotta i gotta make sure this comes out good and like oh i'm not doing this the correct way maybe i don't want to show this i thought that was really cool he says more i want to get into that also he goes my only true and measurable intention is to set up an environment that nurtures my curiosity and openness to the good and bad awesome awesome as a result i find myself not making music not making any music months at a time and then all of a sudden a huge surge of creative ideas flow out as it was an emergent phenomenon or something it's been this way for as long as i can remember being interested in creating art in general as a kid around six to seven years old like that amazing and i truly feel that so let's let's talk about this midnight Mumatone sessions volume seven i would say 90 percent of those songs were created and 90 percent of them were demos too i think only two have came out right now and still i'm still mixing and figuring out ideas i want to like solidify the songs and stuff like that but even that whole mix 35 40 minute mix 90 percent of those songs were created within two weeks of me making the mix knowing i was going to make the mix for like at least two months and then I just created it within those two weeks. I, I totally feel that like going months without making music and then all of a sudden the ideas hit and it's just one after the other after the other. Like amazing, amazing. Like a lot of people go through that. I'm glad that one of the people that I'm inspired by goes through that shit as well. It's really, really dope. What else did he say? He said, it's really hard to explain due to the fact that it's not something I could break down in steps. I only seem to be able to express it, record it, then show it to everyone to experience and let everyone interpret it the way they please, good or bad. I have equal appreciation for the good and bad. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's like, you don't fuck with this? Hey, I get it. I appreciate that too. But if you do, hey, I feel that too. Same thing goes for my live shows. Once I hit play, my mind is so legit goes elsewhere into the end of my set. Yo, couldn't agree more, man. I, I felt like this needed to be shared and maybe not enough people see it, not enough people know about it. But yeah, this is awesome. This is great to hear like a dope producer is actually feeling the same way. Maybe you guys may feel like that. You're trying to create stuff and like here it is like two months later, you're trying to get this song done. It's still not working. Yo, take a break. It's OK to shut the laptop down, turn the computer off and do something else creative like it's really cool. I thought that was awesome. I wanted to share that shit with you guys. Um, that's Lunas. Lunas. Next thing. Oh. So this is something I thought was really cool. JPEG Mafia said this thing. And this is like, I totally feel him on this. I want to play this for you guys to hear as well. I started mixing and mastering because I could not afford mixing and mastering. Yep. I'm not paying someone $2,000 a song to make my shit sound like ass. I'll make it sound <laughs> like ass myself for free. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Like, yo, mixing and mastering. I know it's a lot easier today, but mixing and mastering back in the day, $2,000 or something per song? 
crazy, crazy. Like, it's just not, even for a beat maker, it's like putting out instrumentals. I also don't think that that's like 100% a necessity until, unless, like, if you're a producer that's working on music for an artist, that's something different. But if you're releasing instrumental albums, I think the sound is your sound. And a mixing, mastering engineer, unless you have like a close personal relationship or you're looking for a specific sound that they create, it's going to be hard for like your sound to sound like your sound if you're giving it to somebody else to finalize it. Like, again, that relationship is important and money. Like <laughs> That shit is not fucking cheap at all. Oh, man. All right. So here's something that James Blake posted I thought was really, really cool. It has to do with um TikTok. It has to do with the way music is coming out, reels, being a content creator as well as a musician at the same time. And somebody says something that I want to I want to say at the end of this, too, that I thought was awesome. Um, it had to deal with uh, content creation and being a musician. So James Blake said the chopped and screwed sped up, slowed down. Whoops. Let me go back to it because it's, it's playing in real time. Uh, so so james lake said the chopped and screwed sped up slowed down multiple versions thing isn't great but the effect of tiktok reels on core songwriting arranging of music the attention deficit of listeners and us and of us musicians the immediately available metrics for labels musicians the fact that we have to be good at social media, but not really good, <laughs> but not really need to be great at music, the working of songs, now meaning posting infinite videos with the same clip of the same song. The fact that the fans only know the one moment of a song and for the rest of the set and even the same parts of the same song weren't in the clip, just stand where not really react, just stand there not reacting because why? Because they didn't know it. Yo. I couldn't have fucking said it by myself. And we had these type of conversations before. Like, the fact that music is become, like, mainstream music, I will say, or artists that, like, are, like, James Blake is on a level that's, like, you know, he puts out a song, it's it's going. Um, but, like, being on that level, it's got to be frustrating to put out music that, like, you know that is going to be compartmentalized to that one little section and then nobody's going to fucking listen to the rest of the song or nobody knows it. Like he's saying, people are standing there not reacting because they don't know anything past that short little 10 second clip that they keep hearing over and over on TikTok. So it's like, as a musician, do you sit there and just be like, fuck, do I need to create create a song that has that moment? Like, do I need to do that? Do I need to change the way I make songs, arrange songs to have these moments that people can just repeat over and over and not really care about making songs also the people who are not great at making songs who are just making these little moments instead of making songs like what does that do to music does it water it down does it does it make it like the great musicians not have a place in music anymore like how do you combat this like how do you navigate through it because it's i get like the purpose of tiktok songs i get the purpose of songs that you know are for those people who have short attention spans. Like, the, we shouldn't take away the music from them, but how the else do we navigate as artists that want people to listen to a whole song and know the whole song? Like, because I feel like maybe there's a small percentage of people who like those short bits and then will go listen to the same song and love the whole song. But there is a general population, like you see it on TikTok, that only know those little parts and that's it. And they don't give a shit about the rest of the song. So what are you supposed to do in that that uh, situation? Because James Blake is talking about this. That's the first clip. I want to skip ahead to the next clip. This is a video. I don't even like... I hope just put audio with it. All right, let's see what this says. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Come on. Let's go, let's go. It's going to switch to the next screen. Here we go. All right, he goes, I really love music. I will continue using my social media, but only to connect with you guys. Music is my life's purpose, and I will not have mine destroyed by a bunch of labels, tech companies who don't even pay us and exploit us relentlessly. Okay, there's more to it, but yeah, that is a perfect example. I mean, artists, we've never, ever been getting our fair share. Unless you like remember like the early MySpace days and um, anybody else who knows... Uh, mp3.com if you're that old 1990 i want to say 
five, six, seven, around that time, they were paying people out crazily. But that was before they understood the streaming game. Now, they knew how to jerk us and how to keep all that money to themselves. So yeah, like how do you navigate through that? You can't, you essentially can't trust these tech companies because they're not going to tell you exactly what you're making. You can't trust the labels because they're not going to tell you. You can't trust Spotify. You can't, like Bandcamp seems to be a really good way. But like other than that, I mean, you ain't selling CDs anymore. Those days are done. Um, see, but then that, that all goes together with the live show. So it used to be the option that, okay, well, our live shows, we're going to make money. We're going to do our thing on there. Forget about streaming. It doesn't matter. But now he's talking about it, how like people only remember those little tidbits and then they're standing there not really enjoying the music because they don't know the rest of the music. And, and frankly, they don't care. They just care for that moment so they could be, you know, make the TikTok live of the show and match it up with that song. And then what? You know, so it just, oh, man. So he's like, remember when my Godspeed cover went viral? Neither me nor Frank ever made a cent because it wasn't an original sound in every video. Oh, that's the other part. So if it's a sound that's uploaded by another person that's not the original artist, that money doesn't go to the original artist. That is fucking insane. It's like you can use my music, upload it yourself, make music, make videos, and you get all the money. It's crazy because I remember when the Godspeed cover went viral. Um, it wasn't an original sound in every video. I don't know how many millions of unique videos were made with that song, but it was multiple. I mean, most people didn't even know it was me because my name didn't show up. That's the other thing. He wasn't tagged. His name wasn't in it. So he's not getting any credit. He says, I don't care about the money, but next time your fave goes viral, remember they aren't making shit off that. They just got a. They just got given a platform, and now they have the privilege of touring, touring one clip of the song. The industry is beyond fucked, and musicians are getting fucked harder than anyone. I extreme. I'm extremely lucky that I got in before streaming took over, and before all these shady deals were made behind our backs. I mean, he's he's not saying anything that's not true. Like, not saying anything that's not true. This shit is fucking. Like he hit the nail right on the head with this one. I don't. I don't know what we do here, guys. Like. I have no idea. I release music and most of the time I give it out for free. Streaming, it's on there just because I want people to be able to have access to it. But there's no money in that shit, like, at all. There hasn't been money in that shit, like, as long as I've been doing it my whole fucking life, there hasn't been money in that shit. Um, but yeah, shout out to James Blake for calling this out. He's got a huge voice. Let's see, how many files does he have? He has 645,000. He should have 645 million. I don't know why not enough people are following him, but make sure you go follow James Blake saying amazing shit shit that artists need to be you know banding together and talk about next thing i want to talk about is hey uh what's it called fraxil and wade ross they got a new song called dale mommy and fucking afro jack said he loves it and i love it too but once i saw that afro jack uh, loved it and this is coming out on noise kids uh new label shout out to noise kid i want to make sure that i highlighted this too because dude this is amazing amazing let's let's listen to afro jack and some of the song So crazy. I like this. I, like I don't know this. what the fuck this is. <laughs> That's so fucking nuts. Look at this shit, live set. Shout out to these guys, Fraxel, and, and I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong. This is the first time I'm hearing of you, but Fraxel and Wade Ross, shout out to them. This song, is this song out? I want to see that if this song is out. Fucking Mumatone. Holy shit, man. Mumatone is fucking amazing. I just want to make sure I shout them out. But like, Noise Kid, we shout him out because he's putting putting these songs out on his label. Um, Is the song out now? Homies, announcement, blah, blah, blah. I do not think the song is out yet. But hey, make sure you guys look out for that. That shit is pretty fucking cool man shout out to them next up this is all right i want, I want to make sure i play this shit from the beginning the fucking knockout heard round the world via edc mexico this has been floating everywhere but i love this shit oh my god this kid absolutely deserved this fucking shot to the face 
being obnoxious. Guys trying not to interact and then Toma! You fucking deserve that shit, bro. He he got up like a champ though. One more time, one more time for the culture. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa. His whole fucking chin, bro. He should have went to sleep. He should have went right to fucking sleep. Holy shit. That's what you get, bro. Fucking around. Fucking around. Um, I think we'll skip over this Mark Ronson thing. Okay, so the boys sent me a new Moomoo Tone track that's coming out this Friday, and I want to make sure I shout them out. So let's pull up. Let's pull up their page really quick so you guys can see who these guys are. Oh my god. Fraxil. Let's let this drop. Let's let this drop. Oh, it's available everywhere now, guys. The link is gonna be in the description. Make sure you check it out. One, two, three, let's go. That's so good. So good. Shout out to those guys. Shout out to those guys. Let me uh, scroll into my DMs really quick. Yo, brother. What's up, man? <coughs> yeah, here in the Netherlands, they say like DJ Erche. Erche. It's like the real Dutch way. DJ Erche. DJ Erche. Erche. But you can say also like DJ RTJ. RTJ. In the, uh, in the more English way. So that's fine to me. No. All right, all right. So we have a new one from Maz Noise and DJ RTJ. I wanted to share this because this comes out on Friday and this shit is so fucking fire. So we're gonna play a little bit of it and you know, check this out. But this is Maz Noise and DJ RTJ. I'm gonna pull them up on the page. Let's see. Twelve thousand followers. Make sure you follow my man, my noise. Dude, every fucking collab with these guys, amazing, amazing. You can't stop. Make sure you follow my noise and DJ RTJ. Let's go. Friday, Friday, Friday. Link will be in the description. You know how crazy this is? A little bit more, a little bit more. All right, all right, all right. Make sure you guys go and check that out. That shit is so fucking amazing. Shout out to the guys. Shout out to the guys. And that's all I got here. Make sure you tune in for the next one. We'll be back with some fucking cool music news, Moomatone, and more.